I like to get close, like up in your face close. Oh. The fight against the Dakota Access Pipeline is taking place on the ground, in the water, and in the sky. Shige Ebiznid and Myron Dewey fly their drones over construction sites of the $3.8 billion pipeline. It's nearly complete despite massive opposition from the largest gathering of tribes in history. They surveil the construction from overhead, documenting the pipeline's path through sacred sites and providing intel to protesters who call themselves water protectors. They're actually now, this is how close they are to the river. They're building a barricade around their, uh, their, their site. Oh, so you see that? You see that? You see that? See? It just got hit. Whoa, it got hit again. Their drones are often shot at by police, who, along with private security, are a constant presence around this portion of the 1,172 miles of pipeline. On a night when police shot water protectors with tear gas, rubber bullets, and water cannons in freezing weather, Myron and his crew provided live aerial views of the scene. What we have is percussion grenades being thrown. We have the, the police are right down there in the front. They're, they're spraying water with LRADs. Continue to share as fast as you can. They're trying to hit me. Hold on, I gotta get out of there. They're trying to hit your drone? Yeah, they've already shot me twice. Go straight up. I'm doing it. Okay. I'm getting away. But keep, keep the camera on them, no matter what. Keep the camera on them. So this is one way they keep us from documenting. They shoot our drones. This is what we're, we're looking at the footage the last hours after this, 24 hours, looking at the footage, looking at the human rights violations, looking at them, officers, shooting people with their hands up. But the most um, disturbing thing, I think that we're witnessing, is that they're shooting them in the back as they're running. On my name. On Facebook, Myron's page, Digital Smoke Signals, has become a main source of breaking news around the No Dapple fight. Digital Smoke Signals, and we're doing a non-violent direct drone action. As a non-violent direct drone action, as you, we're, we're, it seems that we're doing is breaking the rules, but we're not breaking the laws. We're breaking the rules in investigative journalism. We're documenting everything that we're doing by drilling in the drilling pad we're not supposed to, going through sacred sites. They have been, they have been violating tribal laws uh, and the Treaty of 1851. And then we take it to an intellectual action and using social media and put it out there in a way for our lawyers to articulate it up in DC. So they told me to get down there. They told me to get down there is what they said. They want me to get down there right now. They're gonna take the weekend. Yeah, let's go. Get back our burial sites, so yeah, let's get out of here. Gotta make sure we're ready to go. The role I play is pretty much the eyes of the sky. The other day as the actions were going on by the, uh, the water there, a lot of people told me that they felt safe, that there was a a drone just hovering above them and watching what's going on. So in a way, these drones are like protecting the camp, uh, the people, the actions that the, the police officials have been doing against us. It's dangerous, I know the risks, but you know, that just what fills me to, keep, to do it actually, you know, cause I'm a local, I'm, I've been here, I've been flying drones before all this blew up. And I got the first, you know, the first footage of the first week as the front lines there and from that on, I just was just dedicated to keep doing this. It's powerful. They were shooting at it today? Yeah, well, it only got hit a couple of times, but I've got stronger tape on it now. Wow. But my camera's getting messed up. Myron is now facing charges for flying his drones. I got a charge for um, stalking Dakota Access Pipeline mercenaries out there. We're still under investigation. We still haven't got all our charges. The key point is it leveled the playing field is that with this type of technology, as a consumer technology, we follow the rules to a T of the North Dakota laws, the FAA regulations. I knew when I got here 
that I was going to have to legally provide uh, representation because I, I was prepared to be up against that. What I was witnessing was the police inaccuracies, police fabrication, uh, the police brutality, the, the police, the stalking, but also the militarization of untrained officers with weapons is what we're seeing. Inciting a riot came from the police side because these guys are untrained and they're using the indigenous people here and all the water protectors and supporters as their training ground. They're like, oh, these are just a bunch of Indians. They don't have anything. Well, this is the second decade of the 21st century and this is not our first ride. We've been dealing with colonization for 500 years. Not only are we decolonizing and re-traditionalizing here, but we're protecting ourselves as tribal government members and tribal members throughout Indian country. So yes, we do have the technology and we've been documenting it from day one.